Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Collado Ortega Anderson, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Pinoy Power Hawaii. First, I'd like to thank the wonderful staff of uh, Think Tech Hawaii for allowing us the opportunity to be here on a weekly basis to share with you topics and concerns uh, about Filipinos in Hawaii. I want to thank my guest today, the uh, founding member of Gumil Oahu, also president of the Kalayab Association of Hawaii, uh, also a wonderful member of the Umbrella Organization of Filipinos in Hawaii, uh, UFCH, United Filipino Council of Hawaii, as well as Oahu Filipino Community Council, and many other organizations that uh, she volunteers, and that's a good job. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my host, Gladys May Manor. Welcome, Ate Gladys. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you, Emmy, for uh, inviting me here. First and foremost, I would like to greet everyone who's listening right now. Uh, a good uh, aloha and good morning. Naimbagabigatyo. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Um, this morning, I, I have a program actually at uh, KPRP every Sunday, and the title of my program is Ngayad uh, Tikanawidan Ken Kultura Kasametenti Historia and Literatura Ilocana, or The Beauty and Splendor of Our Cultural Heritage, History and Literature, every Sunday uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. By the way, I am Gladys May Menor, uh, was born and raised in Barangay 37, Kalayab, Lawag City, Ilocos Norte, Philippines. I came to Hawaii in 1971, and that was I was only 17 years old. Wow. Of course, yes, I experienced different, uh, uh, the, the environment, I mean, where we came from, Emmy, of course, it's old fashioned. So I attended one year at Farrington High School mm -hmm. and then at Cannon's Business College at that time. Now it's uh, healed, I think. Yeah. Um, I took business management. For um, after a while, I work in an office and then work at the airport. After that, well, uh, life is not uh, is easy. So I had to take that uh, caregiving uh, course. So I'm a full-time caregiver also. Wow, that is so wonderful to hear, Ate Gladys. You've come uh, all around and uh, have served in so many different capacities uh, and also helping us fulfill our mission. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain. Educate. And the mm -hmm. big word for us is to empower. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're gonna do just that, to empower those uh, that are involved, not only in our Filipino community, but uh, our, uh, our Hawaii, in helping make Hawaii a better place uh, to live. Mm -hmm. But our mission, uh, doesn't stop there. Mm -hmm. We also go back uh, to the Philippines and other parts of the world where Filipinos are concent concentrated. And this is why uh, the desire to want to preserve and share our Filipino culture is alive and well. Mm -hmm. And this is where Ate Gladys Menor's expertise comes into play. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of your shows with Gumil Uwahoate mm -hmm. involves um, sharing our culture, our traits, our um, belief. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly go over some of those and how you try to relive it by uh, sharing our Filipino culture through your activities with Gumil Oahu. Uh, yes, Emmy, thank you again for asking that. Yes, Gumil Oahu means 
gunglo dagiti Ilocano Manorat iti Oahu or Group of Ilocano Writers Associations here on Oahu. It was organized in 1996. So next month, we will be celebrating our 22nd year of existence. Um, we will have a literary workshop for those who wanted to come and learn how mm -hmm. to start to write anything in English and Iloco. Uh, except Tagalog, because uh, they have their own also. Your focus is on the Ilocano Iloko, culture. Il yes, Ilocano culture. Mm -hmm. So now, since we started this Go Meal, um, we host an uh, international conference. It's, uh, we invited uh, members or chapters all over the world. Mm -hmm. We are the only chapter that did this. We already did five times. So two on my administration, and one from your uh, from uh, and uh, the rest from the other presidents. And so um, it's an honor that we could host a big one like that outside the Philippines because Gumbil Philippines is our umbrella organization. Mm -hmm. So they have a national convention every year also that we participate. But then here in Oahu, Amy, since I became a president in 2001, we used to help the University of Hawaii students taking up Ilocano language. Mm -hmm. Because here in Hawaii, we're the only uh, state or uh, university in the whole world that offer a degree in Iloco. Wow. Yes, so we help that. It, way, way back, we went to lobby so that they, they, it will become also a degree like Tagalog, because Tagalog is uh, of Filipino because it's our national language. So we help from 2002 to 2007 through the professor, uh, the leadership of Manang Presi Espirito. Now she retired, so we retired there also. But then we continue on doing this, and um, live shows, uh, Sarsuela, which is like an opera in English, live drama, uh, with uh, consist of Bukanegan, which is poetic just in English or Balagtasan mm -hmm. in Tagalog, uh, Kinantaran, uh, folk dances, uh, Danio poetry, and of course uh, singing our Iloko uh, folk. folk songs. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is so wonderful to hear at the, your efforts in preserving our culture, uh, the things that we've uh, grown up with, uh, to love. Mm -hmm. And I, I know for myself that I'd like to uh, see more young people, uh, yeah, the people. youth, our children to carry on this tradition. And uh, it is a hard task sometimes because uh, the younger generation sometimes don't show any interest in preserving our culture. Yes. But you are there on a regular basis mm -hmm. to offer uh, these workshops. The gito yung oportunidad, the gito yung agundaway, nga mabalindang alayen, tatap no agtultuloy iti literatura o no kultura tay nga Pilipinos. And I commend you for that. Thank you. For uh, wanting to continue this uh, heritage this legacy that uh, we want to pass on to our children mm -hmm. and our future generation. Now, we do have some topics today that we would uh, like to uh, uh, just kind of enlighten our listeners of some of the things that uh, they might pay attention to, like the uh, Dungao. 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 Daniel. Can Dwaya. Dwaya. It's, yeah. So tell us about it. Okay. I guess I have to <coughs> explain this in Iloko. So that way uh, the young generations, I'm sure they understand also because if their parents teach them how to speak their own dialect, then they, they can understand. Because like me, I have three local uh, uh daughters and they us understand our own language because from the beginning we already taught them our own uh, dialect okay and Amy how this uh, Daniel started means uh, you know idion onana adan dagiti dani yung aramaten dagiti tatao which mostly like as Iloko, Ilocano, agapo iti dani yung kadigiti di lalaeng, iti bibigda. It was not written yet at that time. It was oral. It was oral poetry. 
awan ti naginanakem ngarod nga nangi record wenno nangi surat kadigiti mayabkas a karirik na that means their feelings their size or ladingit wenno pan nakapaay no diket nagtalin na edda si bibiyag iti kaunggan laeng iti soliti panunod da Ngarod, dagiti forma o oh, the form of Daniel, a mayab kasket iso da dagiti iso maganad. Iso tayo dwaya, dwaya means lullaby, mm -hmm. and then dung aw, dung aw means wail, wail. That's how, it, in the form of crying. We express dung our aw. grief. Yes, yes. Uh, if somebody pass away mm -hmm. or how you feel with that certain, uh, uh, th uh, you know, feelings, then you say dung aw. And the Dalot, Dalot is, there's no English in Dalot. I, I've been researching that, but none of them wrote about the Dalot in uh, the, what is the English. Mm -hmm. But I was telling your manong, what is Dalot? Is it chanting? No, that's not chanting, because chanting is just in religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think in modern times, at the Gladys, we can uh, kind of compare it like uh, maybe uh, old-fashioned rapping. Because oh, uh, yes. yeah, if you uh -huh. make sense and you try to uh, use words that kind of rhymes mm -hmm. and uh, tell a story, right. right? But that might be a, <laughs> a drastic comparison. Okay. But yeah, well, the yes. lot is the alive lot. and well. It's it, another it, it's expression. Saying, yeah, mm -hmm. it's saying yeah, because they use it if uh, in courting. Okay, like. Uh, it used to be the style in the Philippines that the the, the guy couldn't say whatever they feel, mm -hmm. so they asked the old people to go with them so that unless asawa, yes asawa, then they say it in a dalot way. They sing it how how they wanted, why they wanted the the lady to mm -hmm. be the uh, the wife of the 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 baru the. Single guy. That they are Armanda. Through the, mm -hmm. the old people can uh, will say that in the lot. They say, "Nalaklak ang amin nga express iti feeling no kasla ikantam nga agapo iti kaunggam." So I can understand and relate to the old-fashioned way mm -hmm. of expressing uh, your romance or your right. love, your desire <laughs> for that special person yeah. uh, that you want to become as your future partner. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's sad, Ate, that we don't uh, see it nowadays. It seems yeah. like that tradition or that culture is uh, lost. It's fading. No, and Gumilwaho, we're still doing it. Even only in Gumilwaho. Only in Gumilwaho. Mm -hmm. That's why some of the children who come and watch, what is that? <laughs> so we have to explain, explain. it to them. That Correct. was the old way of courting. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and then let's uh, continue about the the form of like uh, Dani in a uh, poem like mm -hmm. in Dwaya, Dung Ao, Dalot, uh, Bukanegan, Ken Kan Kanta. And you know, dagito ayab kas dani ket isoda timangi. Pakita anam siak ni Ilocano ti karirik na senaay asog ken ladingit. Okay, you know that one. That, that is so um, so Filipino. Uh, really? Because we uh, <laughs> wear our emotions on our sleeve. Uh, we don't hide it. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes to life by our way of expression. And mm -hmm. uh, those are the terms that you had just uh, gone over, whether it's Dung Ao, Dani, Dwaya, and also Dalot. Dalot. All the Ds yes. in uh, <laughs> Filipino, <laughs> in Ilocano, Ilo right? Yeah, yes. Uh, so in Dalot, like I said, maiyabkas uh, in a Dani, in oral poetry, ket arami dan digiti natataengan alalakay. Lalaki, wano babae. No kasta ang mapandamangas asawa, like I said, iti pamilya ti babayan. Nga rod, they use Dalot, ti lalakiyan digiti na unag, uh, nasabsabungan, uh, ken makabukay rik na. Abalikas tapno itikas ta mapurus da jay sabsabong nda abalasang. Wow, uh, yes. what a great way to uh, earn uh, the love of uh, that uh, cert certain love interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
That's the portion, uh, the first part of our uh, program today, where we have our special guest, Ate Gladys Menor, the uh, founding member of, uh, of course, uh, Gumil Oahu and president of Kalayab Association of Hawaii. Uh, we are having our conversation on uh, the different traditions, uh, cultures, uh, characteristics of uh, the Filipinos. We will be right back with Pinoy Power Hawaii. Uh, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour, we're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to the second portion of Pinoy Power Hawaii. Uh, thank you again to Think Tech Hawaii for uh, giving us the opportunity to discuss uh, issues and uh, matters that concerns our Filipino community. Today we have a pleasure of uh, having a conversation with Ate Gladys Menor. She is the founding uh, president, founding member of, of course, Gumil Oahu, and also the current reigning uh, president of the Kalayab Association of Hawaii. So we were talking earlier about uh, the different Ds, Dung mm Ao, -hmm. Dani, uh, Dalot, and uh, the other one, Ate? Dwaya. Dwaya, which is a lullaby. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about other uh, things like uh, drama, mm -hmm. which is another D. Yes. I know. Sarsuela. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, the things that you would like to uh, leave as a legacy in your hope of continuing on or preserving uh, these uh, traits, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, uh, ways or uh, uh, these characteristics uh, that uh, Filipinos uh, truly have in our hearts. Yes, uh, thank you again, Emmy. I would like to touch about Sarsuela, that's what we've been doing, or the uh, drama, or Bukanegan. And this Sarsuela is like an opera, or I know you watch the No Limitangere, it's a musical drama. Instead of you're expressing it all, say, or you see, just seeing it, you sing it also. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing this for how many, many years? We started uh, live drama way, way back in 2004, and We've been showing it in different schools here, uh, like August Arens, uh, Waipaho Intermediate School, Kapalam Elements, and also in Maui at the Binhi at Ani, and of course our very own Philcom Center. So uh, a lot of old people, especially our audience, because we we portray in the sarsuela about the life of the sakadas, mm -hmm. or we call it Hawaiiano actually. Sakada is a Hiligaynon term. Mm -hmm. It's not Ilocano. Oh, it's not? Okay. It's not. We, you remember when we were young yet in the Philippines, when somebody come home, the we call them Hawaiianos. Hawaiiano, Hawaiianos. Yes. Mm -hmm. So well, uh, sakada is a Hiligaynon term, yes. And now we have a good script writer because he ha we portray this Sakada is a true story actually mm -hmm. um, about the life, how um, 
how they work in the plantation, how they survive, and how they succeeded or uh, succeed, or how I mean, not all of them uh, successful. Some did not make it. Also, mm -hmm. it was a very hard time because uh, we started. Uh, in 1946, circa 1946, mm -hmm. because uh, we didn't want to touch before uh, before the war. So we started when the Hawaii Sugar Planters Association uh, recruited of uh, OFWs. Actually, we they were the first OFW uh, overseas. Philippine workers. So Correct. they were the first uh, contract workers. Um, they are the heroes, actually, mm -hmm. because the Sakadas, they came here to sacrifice, um, just to have a better life with their family. And then, uh, about the story of the Sarsuela, that I wanted to uh, touch it, uh, because three young, young men, uh, but uh, three young men came to Hawaii one is married, oh, t actually two of them married mm -hmm. and one single. So it was um, the first uh, couple, which is portrayed by Yomanung Rizal and Mila Fernandez, mm -hmm. they were married already at that time. So three of them. And then the second couple, which is me and Yomanung Eddie Bueno, mm -hmm. I was pregnant at that time mm -hmm. when he left. And the other couple is uh, Emily Indamo and uh, the current president now of Gumilwaho, June Bermisa. Mm -hmm. They were both single. But the, the thing is, June Bermisa, which por he portrayed no read, no write. The other one, they know mm -hmm. how to read and write. But then, would you believe at the end that the, that person that had, who doesn't know how to read and write, he was the one who succeeded? Succeeded. Yes. yes. But then, the story of Yomanong Rizal, he portrayed the, the life of the Filipinos in the plantation area. They had sabong or kakfai. Mm -hmm. Or, or it's an important part of our culture. Yes, because uh, they brought the palot. Mm -mm. It's our culture. So they brought that uh, kawitan when the first one who came to Hawaii, mm -hmm. he brought that kawitan. So that's our culture. So we portray that also. And the and kawitan is here to stay. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. Yes. And then uh, he used to run a bar, and then you know all this kind of uh, stuff. That's why he was bankrupt. Mm, until yes. until he realized that he already forgot his family. And then me, uh, I was pregnant at that time. He also forgot me. For 20 years, he did not come back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. he, he found a Portuguese uh, lady that he lived with, and then he worked, he had the union, you know, they used to fight for union mm -hmm. so that they have a better uh, uh, representation. Yes, and a yes. salary uh, in order to have a better, yeah. But then they have rallies and everything like that. Oh, he went to jail at that time. But then he forgot us already. Mm -hmm. I was left behind with one son, and I worked hard just to raise him by myself. Mm -hmm. I only found out the story when some, uh, the, uh, the other guy went to the Philippines and uh, visit his family, who is, uh, he already, uh, uh, you know, he, he wanted to went to go back now with the wife and the uh, the kids, mm -hmm. and so what happened? He forgot us, and then the third couple, which is, uh, he did not write the girlfriend for three years. Of course, he didn't know how to read and write. Right. He couldn't tell what was happening right there. So when he went back, the the girlfriend already pregnant because he married somebody else because he didn't know what happened to him already. Mm -hmm. It, it's a very, I, I, I just don't want to talk the whole story, but it's going to be a, a yes. happy ending. Well, and tell us about uh, when is this uh, show? So this coming November, uh, second week, Saturday at August Arends. Uh, I would like to invite, invite everyone. We already showed this Sarsuela, but mm -hmm. they always ask us to repeat it. Repeat it. So, uh, like I said, the story of the Sakadas or the Hawaiianos, we all succeeded. Now they all doc they, they become politicians, doctors. Any uh, they are all in their own field of uh, uh, what do you call this one? Whatever chosen career. Cho chosen career, yes. And so now, as here Filipinos, we are already <coughs> up there. Not they, not they don't see us anymore down there. But the main thing is that we we carry we carry our own 
custom and tradition. Yeah, and let us not forget to teach our children our history. Well, it's wonderful how um, you retold the story, Ate, and mm -hmm. you're going to bring it to life and to play. Yes. And this is a fair representation of some of the examples, uh, the struggles, the trials, the uh, determination of uh, uh, the Sakadas mm -hmm. and what they did, what they had to do to succeed. Yeah. yeah. So tell us more of the legacy that you want to leave behind. I, I wanted to leave behind <coughs> to our younger generation to, you know, continue preserve our culture and tradition by way of, you know, taking up the Ilocano courses or Tagalog, whatever the region you came from, so that uh, it will carry on uh, uh, until the end or for the rest of our lives. And let us remember that wherever we are, wherever we will be, we are always that Ilocano tribe that we, uh, we carry for the rest of our lives. Nothing can change that. And I'm proud to be um, Ilocano, especially Filipino. Well, that's a sign of a true uh, Ilocano who wants to leave her legacy and continue and leave it for future generations. I really want to thank you, Ate Gladys, for taking the time out to uh, be with us, uh, to share or give us a glimpse of <clears throat> the struggles, like I said, the trials, the kiti adunga pandubo kiti biag ni Ilocanos. But nevertheless, Ate, gapo iti detay gundaway when daytoy desire tayong agbalagi isong dagitoy kaya panubok moral lection iti biag tayo tatapno agsaya at agprogreso ti biag tayo ng Pilipinos and after all we are proud of the fact ate that we are the largest minority group dito y Hawaii kaya no champo ti politika kaya tapo aglilin ng barangay ti politicians ng mga lokoy ti rik na tayo tatap no maala dati botos ni Pilipino and we are known to swing the vote yeah and I just wanted to share that without being political because it's a fact yes it's a fact, Emmy. We have the right to vote. Of course, you choose who you think that you know can serve better. Kaslatay ko nak, hawon ang pipinadakas because I'm sure nga they can do their job to serve to serve the people, to serve the community. But lastly, I know we almost gonna wrap up. I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to have a program. At KPRP, so that I will continue to uh, educate, especially the younger generation, mm -hmm. about our culture, our tra tradition, literature, and history of the Filipinos. Well, uh, thank you again, Ate Gladys Menor. That wraps up another. Uh, uh, Pinoy Power Hawaii episode here on Think Tech Hawaii. And again, I want to thank you for taking the time out. We will invite you once again because we oh, have more to share. Oh, thank you. And we want to encourage all of our viewers to uh, keep tuning in to uh, Pinoy Power Hawaii. And uh, this is every Tuesday live 10 a.m. Uh, from uh, the heart of uh, the paradise of the Pacific, which is Hawaii. <laughs> we want to say uh, mahalo, maraming salamat po, and mabuhay. Bye.